corporate event, you know, it's smaller, usually a little bit more personal, luxury, you know, the clients are, are, are treating a little bit, you know, they're giving some, uh, it's kind of an advantage. Uh, very often near to an HQ, to a brand location. So very often, you know, when I do some presentation, I said, you know, before you try to win a corporate event from, you know, uh, uh, look at who are your national champions. It's probably easier to find, you know, a national champion organization that do event in Argentina than to look for, you know, companies from, uh, you know, France that are to do an event in Argentina. Look first, you know, what are the big economy in your, uh, you know, in your, in your uh, GDP figures. You know, what's the big economy? They're probably the ones who are going to spend the most money in your country. Incentive groups will be much more adventurous. They're going to go in more uh, emerging destination, definitely uh, usually very uh, luxury oriented and so a little bit, you know, sexy uh, de destination where there's some, you know, really you can really do some really fun stuff. So very different structures. Already your mindset, the type of marketing you do, the type of approach, the type of people you're going to hire to go after those different types of market are very different, right? So you're going to have for the association conference, you're going to have a guy who's, who's, who's wearing, uh, you know, uh, trousers with a sweater with no sleeves um, and a tie that's red usually. And going to go after the association market. And the corporate market, you want somebody who's going to wear, you know, Hugo Boss, very slim, uh, very, s you know, uh, slim uh, suit and uh, no tie for example, you know, and the incentive group is going to be a guy with a polo shirt and some jeans because it's a very different atmosphere, right? I'm doing stereotypes on purpose, but that's really the perspective. It's a really different type of approach. In our company, for example, we don't have the same sales infrastructure for association and corporate. It's not the same people. It's not the same leadership. It's not the same marketing. It's very, very different, those different markets. And so let's learn more. Decision makers. So when you're trying to sell to an association, you are selling to the board. You're selling to very often volunteer board members. You're selling at the top of the organization. You know, usually a host committee, there's a host president, some people who are volunteers who don't do that all year long. They have a job on the side. A corporation, you're going to be selling to somebody who's in charge of organizing events. Very different. Very different. So you're just selling to maybe a meeting planner, maybe a VP of sales. Uh, you know, definitely procurement more and more, you know, is involved. So if you're in a venue, not too much for destination, but for venue. Uh, an incentive is very often a company like MCI, an event management company, an incentive house. Very often they're going to be the company uh, that you're going to be selling to. So three different styles. So you don't talk the same way to a doctor that the president of a hospital and sitting on the board of an association. Then you're going to talk with the meeting planner in a corporation. Very different perspective, very different sales speech, very different way to win the business. Let me tell you about the corporate decision maker maze. So I was saying on the slide before how you know, the corporations or meeting planner procurement, but this is even more complex. That's the difficulty in the, in to get corporate meetings. Corporate meetings are everywhere in an organization. You know, HR has budget, marketing has budget, commercial director have budget, CEO have budget, secretary has budget. You name it, they have a budget potentially for one type of event or another. So very difficult to, you know, to navigate that maze. You net cannot go, you know, if you're selling advertising, you call the marketing director, it's done. You have a budget, you don't have a budget, thank you very much, you know. It's, it's kind of easy. On, on here, you know, you're trying to sell audit services, you go and see the CFO, you know, do you have an audit firm, can I make a competitive offer, yes or no? With events, you have to go everywhere in the organization. A maze to navigate, very complex. And you can have the slides, and you know, I have like some hints on there, if you want afterwards. So in the association, what you need to know about the associations, so very different. A corporation is making events with money they have, and they're spending the money towards the, towards the event. An association is trying to make money from producing an event. Very different mindset. It's not at all the same thing. And you need to know, very important, the Congress. So if you take 100% of the revenue of an association, 20 to 40% of their revenue is the profit from the conferences, if they have several, or, or one, the conference, that they organize. So when you're talking with them, how can you help them make bottom line results? How can you help them have a bigger audience attend? How can you help them you know, find sponsors? How can you help them optimize their productivity? That's what they're thinking. Right? It's a different mindset. Making money, spending money. Corporation are spending money, association wants to make money. Very different perspective. So different way to sell to market. You know, then they make the rest of their money with membership fees, this is what you pay every year, and you know, different, different other advertising, you know, some donors, so uh, uh, donations, if they have a foundation and so on. 
but very important to understand the business model. Come back to an association conference. So we said it's a business, right? They're trying to make money. And what a conference for an, an, uh, for an association is not, it's not about a gala dinner, it's not about the party, it's not about the gifts, it's not about sightseeing, it's not about the pre and post tour. It's about networking. It's about educational content. It's about exhibiting research. It's about you know, sp getting speakers, thought leaders. This is what they're thinking. So if you take this, can you help as a destination, a venue, an agency if you are, a supplier, a consultant, how can you help them in some of those areas? And that can help you make the business. You need to be thinking about that. Can you help because you're, you're here, you're connected, and you're a venue, I don't know, uh, you know, whatever venue, and you can get access because the president of your venue is friends with the president of a big corporation, and maybe that corporation can be a speaker at the event because it's the same field of work. Great, if you can help, this will help you get the business. So what are clients looking for? Today, you know, this, the word has been out for a long time, and now I think it's really back again. It's infotainment. So, it, you know, after everything that happened in the U.S. with all the cuts and the AAG crisis and the cuts on events, it's, it's, it's a word that's a little bit, you know, controversial. But I believe that that's the future. Inf information, entertainment, infotainment. And if you look, this is a research from a while back. I don't remember. I couldn't find our original, uh, the original date, but it's probably 2007, 2006, 2007. But it says that, you know, what are clients looking for? So definitely the location is a big part because the location adds a flavor to the event. You know, it's, it's going to add to the theme of the event, right? Last year with our company, we did our company meeting in Istanbul. It was about, you know, East meeting West. It was really the perfect destination. There's Bosphorus in the middle. On each side, one side is each, one side is West. That was part of the whole reason why we went to, to Istanbul for our company meeting. 25% of our business now is in Asia, and we wanted to recognize that the, the, uh, the structure of our company is changing. So this is why we chose that destination. It helped us with the theme. So you need to think about how that can also help organization. Where are they in their corporate or their association life cycle? This can help for you to, to, to win the business. Then, you know, I think that if you would do this research again, things like famous speaker, you know, open space aspect would be much higher. You know, the space is critical, different style. You know, now we're still doing, you know, today is top down, but, you know, the networking is much more important. We see that in the feedback we get. We want more time to network, so you need more open spaces, spaces where it's good to navigate. You can sit down. It's really important in the way you organize and you structure your venues um, uh, and your conference centers. Uh, you know, networking, I think that would be much higher nowadays. Participant interaction, people are looking for interaction. So I was happy to see here, you know, the voting, that's good because, you know, you want to get the audience engaged and get the immediate feedback. That's all what's going on with the ev evolution of the digital age, you know, uh, instant feedback quicker. That's very good. You guys are doing this here. Uh, so congratulations to the conference organizers. That's the right way to think. So this is a research again from MPI. So they do this every year. I don't have the, this is 2010, the new one. Uh, yeah, this, this is the current one, actually, sorry. Uh, that was just done. And what we see here, and okay, they don't have yet the data for really uh, South America, so uh, uh, in detail. But what, you have s what we see here, what's really important for me is a big, big learning. And uh, something we have seen as an evolution is the regionalization of the world. So you see that uh, this is how from Canada to Canada, more events from 2009 to 2010, events are being more held in Canada. You know, US, more events stay in the US. In EMEA, more events are staying in EMEA. So we're seeing this whole regionalization. It's not for no means a complete research on what's going on, but we are seeing that in our company. More and more regional perspective. Regional congresses are taking over from, you know, the national ones. The, you know, it's similar. It, it's, if you do a global congress, there's so many different cultures, it's difficult to please everybody. On a regional level, there's some similarities at least. And I really saw that. I was just 15 days in Asia, now I'm 20 days in the Americas traveling. I really see that you know, the, the perspectives are a bit more, much more similar on a regional level. So I really believe that the world is going towards regionalization. So you can see much more corporations doing regional strategies, associations doing regional strategies. So definitely a big focus on this. So just a case study. So the topic was um, 
uh, was seasonality. So what I have here is from my director of, of sales in Spain. He had this graph, so I thought we, we I could use that one because I didn't have another one. And uh, it here it, it basically shows the seasonality of the top 200 Spanish national congresses. From our experience, it's basically the same in every country. And we see the seasonality of our own business because we organize, this is the association conferences, right? And uh, so the different lines that you know, this is uh, uh, extra small event, small event, medium event, large event, Excel event. You know, and how it evolves, but we basically see the same pattern. You know, May, June, October, the big, big month for Congresses. And this is the big frustrations, right? You have a big conference center, you have two large businesses that are coming, they say, ah, this year I'm gonna be in Ar Argentina, is the perfect year, I'm gonna come to Buenos Aires, and then you're like, ah, no luck. Two big events of 10,000 people, they want all to come in June, and I cannot receive both, so I'm gonna lose one of the business. You know, there's, I think there's no solution to that. No luck until you have a <laughs> unless you have a bigger venue, more capacity. But there's really no luck. And this is a problem. So what the only thing you can do is the beauty is corp corporate events can f are also during those periods, just to be clear. It's also the main same peak. You know, it's about, you know, budgeting season. It's about being in the mid-year. It's a being, being, you know, uh, after the summer, September is too soon. People are not back. They have too much work. So October is perfect before budgeting and plus one. That happens uh, at the end of the year. Mid-year, you can do the mid-year report. You started the initiative in January. You start to have the results of the research in June. So really the perfect timings. So there's really nothing we can do to change the seasonality. Now we're seeing more and more some companies, some corporate associations, all looking, we have some events more and more in August now. We've seen that happening more and more because you can get right good value. But again, the problem in certain destinations, you can get good value in the summer. So you need to think if maybe that's one of your added value you want to give when you're doing your marketing. But the problem is often in this period, of course, it's the tourists, right? It's the summer, so there's a lot of tourists all over. And, uh, but here, corporate incentives can happen definitely in the summer, the beginning of the year, kickoff events, you know, board meetings, definitely happening in the first quarter. So it's a good balance to have a strategy to go with corporate and association. This is what we invented with my father when we started the business. We said, okay, we're going to be focused on those two markets because they have different seasonality, and this is really adding to the mix. So we have business all year long nowadays. So we have a, a strategy to really differentiate those different markets, incentives, corporate events, and the association events. This will give you a full portfolio and can optimize your volume and your, uh, your infrastructure.